Hello all, my name is Krishna Ayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to discuss about Hummingbird. And yes, Hummingbird is again an open source library which has been provided by Microsoft. For past three days, many people had personally pinged me uh, in LinkedIn and they had actually sent me a mail to actually explore about Hummingbird and create a video on that. Uh, till then, I did not know much about Hummingbird. I just heard about it, but now I, I started exploring it. And so I'm actually creating this particular video. Altogether, Hummingbird is an awesome library and it will help you in many ways. And that we'll discuss about this. So first of all, uh, this particular open source library, it actually supports, it, actually, it is actually compatible with Python 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, and 3.8. Remember, if you have the Python version less than this, you will not be able to install this Hummingbird, Hummingbird library. And you will also not be able to uh, you know, work with the Hummingbird library itself because it is not compatible with those Python versions. So what is Hummingbird, first of all? So Hummingbird is a library for compiling traditional, trained traditional ML models into tensor computation. Now, if you remember about tensor computation, guys, uh, if you have seen my deep learning videos and my deep learning playlist, I've talked about tensor computation. It usually happens in neural networks. And the reason why it happens is that it will help us to quickly execute and train, ex execute our programs in neural network itself, right? So remember, when you're using Hummingbird, make sure that you have GPUs in a laptop or a desktop. If you don't have, try to execute this into your Google Colab, okay? You can ex execute this whole thing in your Google Colab because there you have GPU functionalities. So let's go ahead. So uh, Hummingbird allows users to seamlessly leverage neural network frameworks such as PyTorch, to accelerate the traditional ML models. Now, this is important. What does this particular line say? It says that, suppose you have created your ML model with the help of XGBoost Random Forest. Suppose I'm taking just as an example. You can convert that particular model into a PyTorch framework with the help of this open source Hummingbird library. So in short, you are actually converting this traditional ML model into uh, a framework such as PyTorch. And yes, there are different frameworks as such, you know. And what it what what it actually helps you to it actually helps you to accelerate you know try to execute those programs quickly we'll try to see we'll try to see that when i'm executing something we'll try to note down the time how much time it is actually taking up okay so let's go ahead so uh, some of the benefits of hummingbird is that all the current and the future optimization implemented in neural network frameworks so the user can benefit from this okay native hardware acceleration this is what i'm i was talking about you know if you have GPUs, you'll be able to use those, you know, for executing your programs. Having a unique platform to support both traditional and neural network models and have all of this without having to re-engineering models. So you don't have to re-engineer your model much. You know, you can directly use this open source library, convert that into a PyTorch framework. Now, apart from that, the main question rises that Hummingbird supports for which all kind of machine learning algorithms. That is also an important point to note, right? So over here it is written, uh, currently, you can use Hummingbird to convert your trained ML model into PyTorch. So in short, uh, you are actually converting your ML model just like a neural network since you are using PyTorch framework. Uh, Hummingbird supports a wide variety of tree-based classifier and regression. So tree-based basic means decision tree, random forest, ADA boost, right? Both classifier and regression, right? So support of other neural network backends is also applicable like ONX, uh, ONNX, PVM, right? So you can definitely explore this. The GitHub link will be given in the description of this particular video. Now, finally, we first of all, we go with the installation, right? Hummingbird was tested on Python greater than or equal to 3.5 on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS machine. It is recommended to use a virtual environment. What does this basically mean? Where if you are trying to install in your local laptop or desktop, which has GPU, first of all, create a new environment and then try to install this particular library, okay? So we'll start with installing the new library that is pip install hummingbird-ml. Now what I'm going to do is that I've just opened a Google Colab. I'm just going to reconnect it. And remember, before reconnecting guys, just go to your runtime. Just click on change runtime, okay? Again, I'm saying go to your runtime and just go over here and just click on change runtime. Here you'll be having none GPU and TPU. Click on TPU and save it, okay? Now, the first installation is this particular command. That is pip install hummingbird dash ml right so here i'm going to do that in google collab you just write this particular exclamation mark before installing this okay so before typing this particular command so i'm just going to execute it 
so that the installation will start taking place and probably it will take around one to two minutes for the whole installation you can see that it is getting installed and already the requirement is already satisfied because i have done the installation itself okay now i have done this particular first step okay then what i'm going to do is that there is one more point to very very note over here what does this hummingbird actually do to run your traditional ml model on dnn frameworks you only need to import this library and add to the dnn underscore framework okay this particular framework is pretty much important to your code okay now let's go ahead and try to implement this okay here you will be seeing a simple example you know a simple classification problem which i'm actually trying to solve with the help of random forest classifier and this particular model i will try to convert that into a pytorch model and then we'll try to predict you know we'll try to predict for some data and then we'll try to see that how much time it is actually taking okay first i'll try to predict with the help of random forest classifier model itself we'll note down the time then what i'll do in the next step i'll convert that model into a pytorch model and then again i'll do the prediction and i'll read note down the time and then we'll try to see that how much time it is actually taking so let's go ahead and try to execute this so here i have imported numpy sklearn.ensemble uh, and remember for importing hummingbird you have to import like this we are going to use this convert function because hummingbird library is responsible for converting your traditional ml model into a pytorch right so we are going to do that so for that i'm just writing from ml uh, for hummingbird.ml import convert and remember guys here i'm just creating my data set here first of all i have taken number of classes two i'm saying that my my outputs are my output labels are two classes itself then i'm creating an array over here np dot array uh np dot random dot rand i have taken this many data points this many features okay and all the values are floating point so here is my x value here is my y value okay in y value i've just said that how many number of classes it has it has two and the random int value it is selecting the classes itself okay so pretty much amazing so we have done with this this is pretty much simple everybody knows that we have used this kind of examples so let me just execute it so this has got executed perfectly you can see over here okay and if you really want to see your x x dot x so here you can see the whole x is this one right similarly you can see your y also right this is my y okay so this is my x and y now the next thing is that creating my random forest classifier pretty much simple i'll initialize random forest classifier number of estimates number of decision trees that i'm going to use is 10 maximum depth i'm saying that okay take it as 10 okay scale underscore model dot fit i'll just execute this now once i execute this you'll be able to see that my model is ready okay after executing this you can see it has got executed perfect now what i'm going to do guys uh understand one thing is that let me just go over here <clears throat> okay so what i'm going to do next step is that i will convert this skl underscore model to pytorch okay so i am actually using this convert method and i am actually uh, you know i'm actually converting that into a pytorch model so for that i'll just use this convert method this convert method was imported over here right and i'm giving my sklearn model and i'm actually converting that into a pytorch framework dnn framework you can also see over here what it has given uh, okay this two dnn framework will be coming in the next line so first of all i'll convert this model into a pytorch framework okay so here you are you can see that i've written the comment using hummingbird to convert the model to pytorch i'll just execute it it will take some time to execute yes now it has got executed uh, i have my model over here now run hummingbird on cpu by default cpu execution is used in hummingbird okay so that basically means if i just write model dot predict of x it is going to get executed in the cpu version itself okay cpu it is going to use the back end of cpu so once i execute it you will be able to see the time because i am trying to note down the time on the top so let's see how much time it is taking okay it has taken somewhere around 1.01 seconds per loop okay per loop somewhere around this now if i want to run this particular model if by using gpu right run prediction on gpu because i want to show you guys this is being converted into a pytorch framework this model is got, getting converted into a pytorch model itself and here i have actually used 
hummingbird on CPU and I'm actually getting this particular value. Now, if I run the prediction on GPUs, in order to run to the GPUs, remember this. Again over here, see, it is used, it is using two function to DNN underscore framework. So this is a kind of framework, uh, like in this particular case, I'm going to use my CUDA libraries, right? If I want to use the GPU in the CUDA library. So I'm writing dot two of CUDA. And then when I do model dot predict of X, you know, then it will run actually on the GPU. Initially here, I did not write dot to CUDA, right? So it was actually running on the CPU. But in this case, run the prediction on the GPU, right? So for that, I'm using dot to CUDA, and then I'm writing model dot predict of X. So once I execute this, guys, you'll be able to see the time. Now just imagine the time over here, okay? 1.01 seconds without the GPU. Over here, you have 12.2 milliseconds, right? The total wall time is 16.5 milliseconds. That is a huge difference when I compare to the above time where it was actually taking about 1.01 seconds per day, right? So this is an amazing way. The best thing, the best interesting thing is that we use Hummingbird to convert the model to PyTorch, right? Now you can see over here it has got converted into a PyTorch framework model. And now we can now utilize both CUDA, that is the GPU part, and I can also utilize the CPU part. Remember, before machine learning models, we could not actually convert into deep learning frameworks libraries or deep learning model itself, but now we are able to convert them with the help of PyTorch framework. And they are also different, different backends when compared to this. But the final main aim is that now we can also run our ML model on GPUs. Isn't it amazing? You are getting this particular output, right? After, while you're doing the predict, right? You're, you're able to do it in milliseconds, microseconds. You'll also be seeing, I've seen examples with the help of microseconds, you know? So I hope this was pretty much amazing. All the reference has been taken from this particular example, guys. There are still more different, different codes, which you can actually click on this particular link, see the notepad, notebooks. And here you have all the examples. You have an XGM example, you have random forest example, you have LGPM example. Every example is present over here. Just try to implement this thing in the cloud, in, in, in this particular collab, Google collab, if you don't have a GPU, or try to run it in your local machine also by installing this Hummingbird ML. Remember, this has a dependency of PyTorch. You also have to install the PyTorch. Now you'll be considering how do you install PyTorch? So what you do is that you just write PyTorch installation, right? So here you'll be getting the first link that is PyTorch over here. Right. If you want to really understand how, what is the command? So you just select this. Okay. You want the stable version. Your system is windows. Suppose you're using Conda, you're using Python. I have CUDA, CUDA uh, that is installed within, uh, within, within my system is 10.1. So I'll select this. I'll use this particular command to do the installation. I'll just write Conda install and this particular command in my Anaconda environment automatically the installation will take place. Right. So if you do this, you'll be able to do that. After you install this, just go and type pip install hummingbird dash ml, right? So the hummingbird will be able to execute it over there. So yes, uh, I hope you like this particular video, guys. This is all about this particular video about hummingbird. And yes, this is again a wonderful open source which converts your traditional ML model to frameworks such as PyTorch, right? Now an ML model will be able to use GPUs in order to do the execution of this program. Isn't it amazing? We are accelerating it, right? We are accelerating the traditional ML model. So yes, guys, this was all about this particular video. I hope you like it. Please do subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed. And I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you one and all. And please do subscribe it, guys. Hit the like button if you like it. So yes, guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.